call to order the Douglas Personnel Board meeting for January 9th, 2020, 3 o'clock. And we do have a quorum. I didn't, uh, I mean, I did get them, I just didn't read them. The other thing I was going to ask about classification when we had highlighted, it says senior center coordinator. At what point are we going to call it like adult social center? Social center, quarter? yeah. It's we like, should when it was that notified to people? I I don't know. All I, I saw was a sign. No. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, all it's I saw just was on a sign. The sign. Yeah. So we have to find when it's official? I think um, probably in their minutes they, they voted on it. But, um, you know, I. I'm, I don't feel like reading the minutes to, okay. to that. But, so um, we'll leave that for now, or we want to, till it's official, so we know? Well, it would be official in the minutes. Mm -hmm. If they, the, the meeting that they had the, um, they changed the name, and then the following meeting when they approved the minutes, then that's when that's it's when official. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it's just a matter of, you know, call Patrice or something like that and ask her when. When it was official? Yeah. Okay. Or even Chris Ferno would probably know because she's on. So want to leave That's that right, right now? She's on the board. Leave that on our minutes right now, and then next meeting we'll know yeah. because I, I need to start changing stuff in the right. packets. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So get hold of Chris Ferno. Yeah. My, my other question: Do we consider Matt a member or a non non member? Um, I don't think he's a member. Okay. Just. Uh, no, we never did with Mike, but. Yeah, and and. And just because we never consider Justin a, a, a member of the Board of Trustees, he's just the director. Right. So the members present and non-member? And well, not non-member. I would just, just put or just mm -hmm. him and put town administrator or whatever his official title. Um, okay. Okay. No, I'm paying <laughs> the lady who does the yoga at the library. <laughs> and um, I, so I'm going to stop there on the way home. But I'm still listening. Okay. I mean, everything looks, um, everything looks good. Yeah, I'll, I'll move that we accept the minutes with, with uh, corrections. With corrections. Is that what you want? Or is it Yeah, with putting whatever they want put for Matt. That's going to be the town administrator. administrator next to the thing. And the. Um, the senior center cha name change. Is that in the minutes? No, no. Oh, okay. no. That's what I was going to wait for the next meeting for get a hold of. She said, uh, is her "Yeah, get a hold of her and yeah. make sure it's official, and then okay. we'll start changing everything." Business is the uh, firefighters full part time, and that was something Matt was going to do, which I didn't right. receive anything on those. Now, the um, fire chief walked in ahead of me. You don't think he was asked to come to the meeting? Or did he? I don't know. No, it says in our old uh, thing something about public safety. They are code PS though. Public safety, and what's what's the um, what is uh, the I highway? Um, Public works or maintenance? PM. Or PW or PM? PM. PS and PM. <laughs> no, maybe it's Public works. Public works. Public works. PM. So they should all be PS, fire department. It's all PS except yeah. for, of course, the chief is just M4.
Oh, yeah. oh, it is. Uh, howdy, howdy, howdy. Over you. Um, Are you here to discuss the firefighters? Yeah, I think uh, Matt's yeah. coming in, I thought, right? We, we expect him, yeah. Uh, he's probably just running. I think he was in yeah. the building. We may as well tell him what we've... Well, as far as being, um, the codes would be um, public safety, which is PS, which they are all listed in PS. But we were concerned with... Uh, Missing. Well, I know one of the problems that he can tell you what the problem is. What problem? With putting the uh, part time and full time people on the same chat. Well, they won't go on the same chart. Right. Right, but you you said the differences between the two positions should be looked at, you know, as far as pay, if they have the same responsibilities when they're on duty. So what we were, what we're talking about is the need to review the compensation chart for the part-time, well, they're not part-time, they're called firefighters. Right. Because well, the you could, yeah, they call. I mean, they get yeah. paid by the hour once they get a call. The issue we have is we've got two rates. We've got a person gets a certain rate when they're on an ambulance call, and they get a certain rate when they're on a fire call. So if they're a firefighter and they're trained and certified to the firefighter level and they're a paramedic, well, why would you have two different rates? You should have a firefighter paramedic rate or a firefighter EMT rate. I'll give you a perfect example. If I have, I've got a firefighter who's a captain. Okay. She's also a paramedic. Mm -hmm. So we get a call for a crash. She rolls out with the engine, secures a scene, but now it's a critical patient. So she she's moves over to the ambulance yeah. side and she's starting IVs and maybe intubating a patient, assisting mm -hmm. the, uh, the duty crew. Or if it's not even a duty crew, which is the full-time crew, um, it might be she's covering the second ambulance or we need a second ambulance. Now, where do you... Right. She's doing the same job. Exactly. <clears throat> In other words, they should be paid at the higher rate because... They've taken that special added training that not most other people on the department have. So. so what do you do when you have a call f firefighter who happens to have all those um, higher educational stuff, which you not you would you but you hire them as a call firefighter and that's all that they do? Um, well, that's not what it won't be all they do. I mean, if they have all those credentials, they're going to be used on both sides of the aisle. It's in other words, if you're if you're a firefighter paramedic, and you're a firefighter, you have the certifications for both. You're not going to go. Well, I'm not doing the ambulance today. I'm not do. I, I'm not doing that. Pilot. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's. I'm, I'm, I'm saying yeah. the way it yeah. is. It's not acceptable. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, if and and thereby, part of the problem is, it's demotivating. <laughs> to be trained at this level, be used at a certain level because they would need it, and then go, well, you, we came on the engine, so we're only gonna pay you $5 an hour, $6 an hour, less than that. In other words, if they're, if they're at that training level, they can be utilized in any capacity at any time, it should be a flat rate for that. So that's the chief's beef with this. My beef is the same beef, and I also have a different beef with it which is that this chart needs to be updated because we have different, I think we're just a completely different approach now to rank. So <clears throat> in the case of our 
uh, call captain who is also an EMT paramedic. Captain is captain. So if she shows up and she's the captain, she's she's in a ranked officer role. She can order all kinds of people around, including whether they're on the ambulance or on, on a piece of fire equipment. We're calling her in because she's the captain. So we might want to distinguish <coughs> for that the private level so the person who's just coming it was a rank and file firefighter versus a rank and file medic but once they become a lieutenant it's it's regardless of what call they're responding to they get a lieutenant's rate of pay and because it's rank it should be more than the rank and file the, mm -hmm. because we're, we're not really a tight organization if if I can be, have the title deputy fire chief and I'm a PS5 but I'm a part-time call rank and file medic. I'm a PS6. And the difference is a dollar an hour, but the difference in their actual authority on the, on the scene is significant. So that was that's my beef with it. I think what we've done with the union employees, with the union contractors, we've clearly set aside lieutenant. Once you achieve lieutenant, there is one rate of pay for a lieutenant. Mm -hmm. Because in the chief, because he's a strong chief under the Massachusetts statutes, can organize the department as he sees fit. He's chosen to promote someone to lieutenant for many reasons, leadership, ability, experience, things that go above and beyond the paper qualifications. That, that got that person in the door, but now that you have a track record, you've made that decision to promote that person. So we have two lieutenants that are medics, one lieutenant who is not. The lieutenant who is not has 20 years of firefighting experience with the other two. Well, the other two do, but their primary focus professionally is medic. They're, they're both medics, and when their part-time jobs, they're on rescu uh, ambulance rescue services in the city. They're not uh, call firefighters for other jurisdictions, to the best of my knowledge, they're not. So it's You're just talking just about the guy that was down, was down in, in the Washington area. Yeah. So he, <clears throat> he's got about 10 years, but it's solid. Like flat out. We're talking what we're talking Washington, Baltimore area. We responded to the Baltimore riots. So this kid has a lot of fire experience. So he's got a good leadership ability, and um, just because of the sheer volume in, in ten years. So so the opportunity came up. The chief wasn't going to pass over him for a promotion. Like the, the role clearly falls for leadership and planning and forethought on scene. So. Uh, but that's that's how we've handled it on the union side. That's all very formal. Is everyone Tied in up. the union? No. No. Okay. Uh, we Who's have Scott? seven full-timers that are in the union. They're firefighters that are in the union. The call department does not have a union. And the EMTs aren't in the union either? No, they're no. cross-trained. Well, many are cross-trained. We have are. a couple that are just EMTs. They're per DM people. Um, uh, but most of the time, I would say more times than not, once people get exposed to one part of the fire department, they want to be involved in the other part, you know, because I think it's just one of those things where when you help people and, and you see certain things go on, you want to be able to have a skill to solve that problem too, so people just sort of follow that progression, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and so this is um, something that's um, the quandary of all fire departments and ambulance services throughout <coughs> central Massachusetts? Or? Um, I, I would say most departments, I, I, I haven't done a survey, I'll say that right up front. This is something that Matt and I have been talking about for a couple years now and it's just one of those, it's a big nut to crack in my opinion because it's so different but it it's not only makes more sense to pay people for their level of skill and their level of certification. But it, when you have two or three different rates, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare for for payroll. <laughs> okay, this was an ambulance, oh, this an ambulance call or a fire call? Okay, well the fire call, it's this rate. You know, if it's an ambulance call, it's just... It, 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 so this is, are we just talking call, call people or are we um, we're talking because I think people. that's where it gets. Um, we're, we're talking call people. Yeah. We're talking call people. I think the only the reason you would bring full-time rates of compensation into your discussion is as a point of comparison. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And I think that is where we would need a, a little bit of a survey, Chief. What, yep. How do other communities, what's the gap between their full-time rate of pay and their call for the same job? I wonder how many it's not going to be the same. Call. A lot. A lot? Okay. So Grafton is all call. Really? Is Sutton all call? No, Sutton has four full-time. Four full-time. But wow. uh, again, they, own, they have a private ambulance service in. So the town contracts out for an ambulance service, and they share it with three other towns. Well, those are two of them, and Millbury's the three. Millbury, Sutton, and Grafton. Hmm. But still, they have call force. They have call fire call. And they have call EMTs, and they still call call EMTs to the scene, hmm. even though hmm. they have a, an ambulance service. For them. No, I, well, I'm thinking the, the problem is in if you have highway people, they're all going to be still paid on an hourly rate for their highway work, right? And then then you'd have a different rate for for the the um, firefighters right. when they become a firefighter. So that's where you have to figure all that out. It's not going to be easy and you have to be strict with it. You can't just sort of say, oh, well, that's it. Uh -huh. But I don't think too many of them are EMTs. I know John would be, but... John and Adam both are in. Oh, uh, and Adam, okay. Uh, at one point we had two or three others that are on the highway, but now it's it's right. those two, I think. Right. Fitzy was there for a while, but came over. Right. Um, full time. Just based on myself, if I had all the credentials, I wouldn't be very happy if someone else was getting paid and I responded to the call and got paid less. Especially when you might be the one that has the higher yeah, credential. Right, right. <laughs> it's just, well, I, I happen to be on a red truck and uh, the ambulance and red, instead of the exactly. fire truck. Exactly. The ambulance pay seems to be, you know, I think uh, as a rule it's usually a little bit more. Um, however, I believe our per diem rates for medics is actually higher than it is for full time. Mm. And I think the reasoning there is it probably dates, predates me. But I think the reasoning there was, well, we weren't paying benefits for them. Mm -hmm. They were, you know, we weren't paying insurance and stuff like that. So, um, now whereas with the full-timers, they're getting health insurance, uh, dental, right. all that type of stuff. Is there a, a minimum, like if, if you get called out, you pay for four hours regardless, or is there anything with like With the full-time people, they have a minimum of an hour right now in the contract. Right now, the call people don't have anything. Really? So we're looking, to, we're looking at that as well. Because um, sometimes that makes up for it. You it know? Because it's some of the other things is so the call people, if they let's say they get a call and it's maybe a carbon monoxide detector in the middle of the night. And usually myself or John as the chief officer will respond and we'll go right to the address. And sometimes before the human engine even gets out the door, well I've identified it, it's a false alarm or it's a bad detector. Just hold the engine in quarters, no need to put them on the road. So the guys will come from home after getting up at 2 in the morning and get 15 minutes of pay. <laughs> that's, that's very demotivating. <laughs> it, it sure is, yeah. Uh, whereas on a full-time, one of the full-timers, like they're required to come in and do training. If they come in for training, they're time and a half for every hour they're there, and they have a minimum of an hour. So let's say you do a, even, let's just say one hour. If they come in and they get their pay plus half, oftentimes that one hour is more than two hours that what a call guy would get. Right. I don't know how you straighten this all out. Well, we've talked Very about carefully. Carefully. Yeah, really. <laughs> yeah, really. Yeah. But you're going to be losing people. But I know, I know, I'm pretty sure Highway still has a minimum. You get called out during the night, you get paid for two hours, even if it's... Well, yeah, and cable does too. Yeah. Four hours, I think it is. And maybe it's more for highway now, but it used to be two hours. We it mentioned the other night we were going to suggest if we had a, you had to set what's what's actually considered a nighttime call. A nighttime call to me is you know if I'm already in bed at nine thirty at night or ten o'clock, say ten o'clock to six in the morning, considered a nighttime call. That's so funny. if you come out, two hour minute. Otherwise, you're going to, I'm not getting up at 15 That's minutes. That's right, nobody will answer the call. Not unless I know it's a working fire and, you know. Yeah, right. 
Yeah. We're pulling people out of windows and stuff. Now that's exciting, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth getting up for. But, uh, no, in their defense, I mean, you know, I know I'm getting older and it's a lot harder for me to roll out of bed at 2 o'clock in the morning and be with the program and actually want to be up. Yeah, right. <laughs> <clears throat> so it's trying to, you know, keep people motivated and, and keep keep it fair and pe keep the playing field level so that everybody's, you know, happy. you know, happy and I don't even know what the word would be. I think it's just keeping things fair. You don't have a copy of your budget with you. Do you? I do. What did you ask for for part-time personnel on the fire side? Uh, take a look. Maybe an add fire and an ambulance together. All right, so total with salaries and expenses? Just part-time. For a call is really what I'm looking for. Is the yeah. call. So, part-time ambulance is ten thousand six hundred. Part-time fire is forty-eight thousand three hundred two. So the two combined is fifty-eight thousand. Right. If we hire an EMT paramedic right now. It starts off right around 63,000. 63, 65,000 for one part time one firefighter. Full time. Right. Plus and benefits. Then, so, and you add their health insurance, what did I say, the 61, that's 91,000 mm -hmm. for one person who could only work one rotation. So, when people ask about the economics, why, why would you be stubborn and try to keep your call force in place? This is exactly yeah, why. Yeah, yeah. Because you get 14 on the fire ground without having 14 full-time employees. That's the whole right. idea of it. Mm -hmm. It'll, it's actually the thing that enables the town to have a full-time fire department is the fact that it has a call. So, we've we got to kind of fix this. Um, we don't we have to have get the answer today. We just wanted to float, mm -hmm. share with you what our thoughts are and look for your advice because that's what yep. we'll be. We're looking to address this in May in the town meeting, so we have months to, to work on it, but um, <clears throat> sorting out how people fall is going to be very important going forward. Um, we only had a full-time fire department really fully 24-7 since three 2017, years. so January we haven't three years. had a lot of time to think about this, but the <coughs> we're sitting the road now, I think, <coughs> in, across New England, not just the Commonwealth, Recruiting and retaining call firefighters and paramedics is an issue. It's, it's a, a nationwide world. problem. It's a nationwide problem. You know, you folks know just from what it's like to get people to volunteer for boards. <laughs> you know? Um, I mentioned it the other night at the selectmen's meeting when we, were, when we were talking about this. Time constraints of people are much different than they were even 20 years ago. I mean, back when I first started, even when I was full time, when I first started here, I'd stay up, I wouldn't leave town. That wasn't right, I don't want to miss a call. Mm -hmm. And people go, you're not right. And I go, ah, probably not. <laughs> but um, now, you know, if you have young children, I've got some that have young children. Um, I have some that don't have any children yet. I've got some that have grandchildren. So it's, people want to spend time with their families. And, and I was saying to the selectmen the other night, you know, we're not having people come in the door like we want. There's a 67% chance that if you are a firefighter, you're going to get cancer in your career. 67% chance. Mm -hmm. Su <coughs> firefighter suicide is on the rise. Um, all that stuff. You just see stuff and, and, to, and we don't want people to take our call people for granted. I think about... Yeah, we needed full-time people, but they were the backbone of this department that held us together. Think about it. If you just have one small, one car accident, so you figure the two people there that are on duty, they're pretty much there to get the ambulance out the door and stop medical treatment. But you've still got to have people, number one, that cover the rest of the town, right. that can come in with an engine if they have to, or maybe there's two ambulances that are needed, grab the second ambulance, bring that one. There's just so many variables that are there. And yet the availability of people is so much less because they're going to soccer, they're going to drama, they're going to all these things with their family. Plus, 
or we're on vacation or well I get up I got to be up for work till at four because I got to go to work and people well, I really want to get up at three mm -hmm. for a call knowing I got to leave in an hour and how long <coughs> is it going to take me to get back home um, before I leave for work and I my and boss is going to get mad at me. The days that everybody worked in Douglas are over. You know, everybody's traveling. I mean, when it's I started, like the ambulance was down the mill for a while. I had people sure. from the mill coming in sure. to cover ambulance calls. And um, we just don't do that anymore. It's just that you can't get the people to do it. I mean, I put my first eight years as chief here, I put probably eight to ten people through the fire academy. And, and, and they've shortened it up. They've made the program 220 because it was 320 out. So that 320 hours was, was it was spread out over six months, and they weren't getting paid any money to go. They had to mm. pay their travel back and forth, and then they didn't get any money to go. The only time they got money was, and we started doing calls once it was certified. So we want to make sure they're trying to we're trying to get money in the budget for mileage for when they travel back, because Stowe's not really close. It's 50, no, it's not. 50 minutes, almost an hour away, and to do that three times a week, mm -hmm. that's a drain. So, so the other part of the conversation is if you figure that people have to step up from somewhere, the first step right now is probationary call firefighter, right. which is minimum yeah, wage. Yeah, we had a, a question about yeah. why why would would you have something like that? <laughs> you know, just well, that was my question, too. Yeah, yeah because you, you're on probation your first, what, three or six months of months. Well, being on Well, you're the talking job. about probationary firefighter? In their yeah. profession, it does mean more than just technically being on probation. Right. Now, yeah, it's not just technically probation. We're going to cut you loose after a year if you're, if you're not, you know. Probationary firefighter is somebody who came in, and yes, they're a body on the fire department. We issue them gear, but they have restrictions. They can't go in a burning building. They've got to go and graduate the academy before they're a full-fledged firefighter. And we've actually put an orange shield on their helmet so that no matter where they go, they can't go out of town mutually. aid. They cannot, not unless... They're with me or the deputy because you don't want them on somebody else's fire ground. They're not really trained well enough to understand what hazards are. So um, we identify them with that with that orange shield so people know where they stick out like a sore thumb. <laughs> oh, what are you? Oh, Proby, uh, go stand over there. <laughs> now, is that a universal term or can you call them something else? What's that? Dodo head or something. <laughs> like <that>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the fire service, fire lingo is it's it's Proby. Proby. Okay. Probie. Probie. So one of the one of the, so one of the guys that was involved in the Worcester tragedy was a probationary firefighter in the fire. Oh yeah, but he was within his first year. He was a probie for the first year. Yeah. The ge the gentleman in December or November yeah. who went out the window and survived, he was a probie. He was with his lieutenant. And uh, yeah, he you're a probie for the first year. You're considered a probie, and he'd already gone through their fire academy. But he's, he's probably for a year before he, you know you actually get. Anyway, they tell us uh, you can't train enough for a job that can kill you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's <laughs> very, very uh, Confucian. Mm. <laughs> anyway, so probe, so it's, it's, we're very careful about who we let go where because of that because the hazards are there. So that's part of the lingo that kind of crosses over, but I'm still not entirely sure that the uh, minimum, that's a minimum wage. Yes, you know. we pay them minimum wage just because we want, you know, they're there, they're coming to the car. But are you comfortable with that? In other words, what does that mean? <coughs> I am comfortable with it. I want them to okay. get some compensation for, again, you're on the team, but you don't have the uniform type yeah. thing. <clears throat> it's demotivating. So we give them something. I mean, they are, you know, they are, they are putting forth an effort to be there at two in the morning to help out. They can, they can still be of help. You know, we've show, we we take them, show them how to set up lighting and things like that. So, which help change bottles if firefighters are coming in out of the building, change out their air bottle. Nothing that's really dangerous. You know. But now we are paying for them to go to the academy, right? No, we haven't. Just, we still, we still do not have that. Okay. That's something that, you know, okay. these are, I have a list of things we brought to the selectmen about the other night about, um, about some of this stuff. So those are the issues. So we'll 
I don't know if we want to put what you guys want us to do. We want to put together a straw man that we can peck Some, away at? Yeah, well, I'd like something as far as the job description of the, the probie is to specify that so we have that up. We know what that do is. Do we already have a job description for every single one of no, these that's entries what, on the chart? No. All right. no. <coughs> that's what I wanted to get to with our comparison. Okay. <laughs> but, um, and as far as like the call ones, as far as, you know, what you want to do with that, that's difficult for. Well, we'll put together the job know? descriptions and a recommendation, but okay. I don't think we're going to be overly wedded to the recommendations. Early, it's considered an early draft. Okay. Uh, yeah, if, if there were other towns that were kind of similar to see what they do. I'm, I'm, I, it's only a guess, only just because I know a lot of chiefs and whatnot, and sometimes it's just under, what we'll do sometimes is we'll send out a, C, a an email, give me a salaries and, and right. sal like there's a chief salary, there's a deputy chief salary, there's a firefighter paramedic salary range and if you put that out there usually within a couple of days you can get a bunch of chiefs and you'll get a, you'll get a good sampling of what people have been getting uh, or it's just a matter of me getting on the phone and calling people chiefs directly because they'll do that too well we have our usual benchmarks now the, the sterlings the spencers munson Sutton's a little bit different but you know we munson would be a perfect one and he's in oxford now so i'll call him yeah. All right. Yep. Well, even Oxford's not a bad choice. Well, they twelve thousand people. Yeah, well, it's not the people, is it? Is it or well, it's the calls we, really? It's the way you're structured. Yeah. yeah. What's yeah. The, what the statistics are? They, I'll be honest with you. They're, they're very busy. They, Oxford's very busy, uh, but I think they're they'll do EMS two or three thousand ambulance calls a year. Yeah, they're EMS heavy. But they're close to Webster, just like we're close to Webster. Um, we do a lot of work in Webster's fires. If, if Webster's burning, we're there. Mm -hmm. I'm just surprised at how many times the ambulance goes by my house. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we hear a lot of noise just from yeah. Route 16. Yeah. As, um, just as a comparison, when I started here 20 years ago, full time, the first year we did 335 ambulance calls. Those things stick out in my mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And <clears throat> Two years ago, we did 926. Right. So that's that's a huge number to try to... Can you imagine trying to cover that with the same people you had 20 years ago, two and people? Yeah. yeah, but you don't anymore. You have no. more. Yeah. All right. I think we kicked that pretty hard. So we, that's our marching orders. We need a straw man a recommendation. Mm -hmm. And the process we'll follow is we'll get the advice of this board, we'll tighten it up, and then bring it to the... Board of Selectmen, there will, be, there will be a policy component and then there will be the comp chart portion that will be prepared for the yeah. a warrant article. So you'd have a job description? Yeah, the job descriptions have. So you're going to have a call for the firefighter, call for paramedic and combination? So what do you have for job description? Because I, I, I have, the last ones I have was sent to me by Debbie Hines like Okay. Five, six years we, ago. We ha that's probably the last ones we have. Um, I'm pretty sure there was one for firefighter paramedic. We have, let's see, well, that one firefighter seems EMT, really cool. and that's a PS3, and firefighter intermediary paramedic, limited part time, that's a PS3. Call firefighter is a PS2. On call EMT is a PS2. And chief, I have M4, deputy chief, PS8, assistant fire chief, PS7. I think that's it there. We have a hold here for captain firefighter. We're waiting because we're missing some uh, supervision and accountability issues. And so even what you're saying is different than what's here. Right. That's why I have a list that I need. Because <laughs> this is what we get from job descriptions. Mm. So. I mean, I could send you all the job descriptions on the fire, but we need to, um, the terminology as far as, is it the same thing as what we need to. It's like uh, one know? of the words you just said, you said the magic word, you said the word intermediary. Well, there is no such thing. Intermediate, yeah, they did yeah. away with intermediate fire, right. EMTs. 
<laughs> Actually, they're not really done no, away with it. Just, right. It's just they're not like a rare bird. It's not you know? allowed. Okay. That's what we were to begin with about um, 10 years ago. We, we were still running an intermediate service, which meant we could only do advanced airway and IVs. So we didn't have any of the medications, we didn't have cardiac monitors or anything. Okay. So, how about if I send you all the ones that are archived right now? Okay. Yep. You That's a call. <laughs> it's okay. It's a lot of different <laughs> things <laughs> chirping over there. She's got quite an assortment. <laughs> I apologize. Okay. It's a fire phone. Doesn't sound like any of the series. If it is, I'll leave. Something the duty crew can handle. Okay, if I send you all the job descriptions to the archive. Yep. And then if you can review the titles and make sure that those are the ones that you're yep. actually doing. Absolutely. And then let us know what we need to do for the ones that are missing. Okay. And then we'll work. You want my, my, my emails on that card? I love them. Thank you. And very if you much. want to just. There's a one in there. If you take that one out, it says K Vincent one. Take oh, the yes. one out. They changed that on me. It does. I'm they? not number one anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You're not nasty of Tenek. You? <laughs> You're not nasty of Tenek either. So no, the, the, the IT guy did that to me. <laughs> okay, so I'll send you all the ones we have archived. Right. Take a look at those and proceed from there. All right, very yeah. good. Yeah, thank you. Thanks thank a bunch. Be right. good. Yeah. Interesting. Mm. Very how it's changed so much. Yeah. I've looked at over 20 odd years, and I remember when they were <laughs> the one with the horn. <laughs> they used to have a horn thing there, and it was like, whoa. Oh, you mean over at the old fire station? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? Well, I live right near there, and they used to be, like two o'clock in the morning or whatever. It's like, oh, fire. Did you count the bells? I mean, I lived in a town where you um, you would count and you, and then you had this little code map and you could figure see exactly the where the fire was, you know, and then, but the, yeah, you'd I hear know. these beep, beep, no, yeah, beeps no. and, oh, it's Church Street. <laughs> no, that's true. That system is used in a lot of places that yeah. are reliant on call and that, what a complicated, so, you got to really wake up quick to count the number of blasts on the yeah, horn to make sure you yeah, go to the right yeah, place. Yeah. <laughs> or you have to live in an awful small town. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I want to discuss the transfer station slash um, board of health supervisor. If we're going to get a, a new thing on that because uh, it got changed. So let's see your agenda we're working on. Um, oh. I'll start with my most frustrating issue first. Which okay. is I'm trying to get you the benchmark survey. So the MMA or has sub-organizations, mm -hmm. right? So there's okay. the MMMA, which is Massachusetts Municipal Managers. Ah, okay. So that's me and my peers. Yeah. There's now what's called the MMHR, so Massachusetts Municipal Human Resources mm -hmm. officials. So it used to be MMPH or something, um, MMPO, uh, but now it's HR. And... Um, they did the benchmark survey this year. I have tried for the past several weeks <laughs> to log into their website to enter mm -hmm. our data and to get the benchmark study in return because that's the quid pro quo. You mm -hmm. have to give them yours to get theirs, and they haven't been able to get their website to work. So I don't have a lot for you there. <laughs> okay, because I know I had gone to the MM Association, and they do have job descriptions. They have job descriptions. But I was looking for manuals or something, because you had mentioned that we could start looking at some of the manuals, so we will start working on ours. Yeah. You know? Well, so yeah. Is that located somewhere? <laughs> is that also? Because the job descriptions were there, and matter of fact, they had... Um, I said, well, this is good information, but it's not exactly. It's, but it's the problem. It's not really on point. Because every yeah. town is different. It's just so a lot of times they put those templates out there, and then they'll be altered by the local okay. official to fit their situation. Yeah. But I really wanted the benchmark, because I think that's what we discussed. Was right, it was. And then I found this one on best practices for um, social media practices. I yeah. That. And well, I we just had a talk these, on this. Yeah, these are job descriptions. 
Oh, I thought we would go over later and take a look at their format, mm -hmm. templates and stuff like that. This is what they had, which I thought was interesting. What was the one you said, transfer station slash what? It was transfer station slash board of health supervisor. Well, it says, Remember yeah. it was changed okay. somehow, and we really never got a, uh, received anything to... Um, well, it was sort of an interim, because didn't the trans there was one big honcho at the transfer station, was there? Or was there never? I don't think there ever was. Okay, so they didn't ever, or maybe they said they wanted to do that. Right, we yeah. had it vacant for a long time here. And, um, so this predates me, so yeah. that role isn't something I'm even familiar with hearing talked about. I know, that's what I'm saying, it's confusing because it's like... We don't have it, and I don't think we are even looking to have it. Yeah, because you don't have the dough to do anything with it. Or do you pay the, those? people or do they get a tax relief or they get paid, they get paid yeah. yeah from the from the enterprise fund okay so or just who, don't see. who, who yeah. supervises mm -hmm. the, those people as far as like who coordinates the supervisor mm -hmm. oh the board of health yeah board of health or the, it used the to be secretary. marlene yeah, yeah. Okay. so yeah it's a little <laughs> mm. we got lots of different models all coexisting in Douglas and well, you know that as a library trustee right so the library trustees are independent of the town administrator in terms of appointment authority you still have to comply with our personnel system sort of yeah <laughs> <laughs> right the water commission is very is much more cut and dried the town administrator is not the appointing authority they are mm -hmm. but when it comes to the personnel system they are completely relying upon us for job description. I mean, they have to comply with the personnel bylaw because they're not exempted from it. Only the schools and library. So there's there's all these other things. Now, Board of Health really is a town department. It's a little bit weird. Mm -hmm. It's not elected anymore, right? It's appointed. So now it's a department. So the group, corporate, mm -hmm. or the, the, the whole the quorum of the board, board is the department head. Okay. Right now, they don't. It doesn't appear to me they have clear, uh, singular management authority because it's not perceived as needed. Uh, the we've had any number of complaints about things at the landfill. What happens is it goes to the board. Mm -hmm. They have executive session. They investigate what's going on. They levy discipline, and if there's going to be appeal from their decision, it comes to me okay. through so the personnel policies of the town. That was the. You call it the dispute resolution, I call it grievance procedure, but it's the same thing. The department head hears the complaint, and then it goes up to the town administrator on appeal. It would have, under the old, before 2012, would have come here, now it comes to me, it hasn't been used yet. <coughs> but there is no person pulling together the various aspects of the landfill's business in terms of managing the employees yeah. or uh, managing. Um, being a point person on the selection of a hauler, mm -hmm. none of that. This the board okay. itself is still very much hands on, and that's if it ain't broke. Bro right. Yeah, yeah right. Right. exactly. Yeah. 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 So maybe that's a question of eliminating it. It's yeah. not in the that's chart now, is it? No, it's not listed. Right, it's not listed. I don't even we know where that would go. That would probably go on public works, and that's not there. We had it under Board of Health, and then it was Administrative Supervisor, and under that was the Transfer Station Supervisor. You don't have either of those positions right now. I think that was yeah. a position we, they were yeah. going to try to fund, and they never got funding for anybody on that. But was this after Marlene left then? No, it was before. It was before. Yeah, it was a quite a while before Marlene left. Okay, so we should eliminate... Yeah. It's vacant anyway, so that's why I was wondering what's going on with that. Okay. okay. Right. Now, did I distribute the personnel budget to you? No. We did, we've never had it. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're doing that one. The no, no. I'll be right back. Excuse, excuse me, Madam Chair, if you don't need me for the yeah, next time. Yeah, no, that. Personnel people, employees, I think he means. Not personnel us. We don't have a budget. I know. <laughs> That's what I was wondering. Maybe I'll write more checks. I was just going to say, maybe we're getting money. Uh, 
No, he must mean personal employees. Which, um, it would just go up, the... Whatever percentage, yeah. Yeah, yeah. One, and one steps and percentages, yeah. 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 So that's, I don't think he would come in here with something from, uh, Gene, you know, it's it's got to be just that percentage. And yeah, steps. I would think. Yeah. Other oh, people have steps. Yeah, not the people that are. Um, and there aren't too many people that aren't on step ten. Contract positions that we wouldn't see that because it's not under us. Right. So. Yeah, I thought these were good. They, I mean, it was nicely set up. The only thing it didn't have, which I was talking to uh, Vivian about, is at the bottom we had what it was rated and what the, the number we got was. Mm -hmm. And I had noticed pulling up some of the job descriptions that they didn't have that. So my concern was, uh, where is the job description? I can't find it. Yes. Should I give it to you? No. Oh, here. No. Okay, this one here. Um, we have it here, and it says 220. I look on my chart, right? And it says, um, mm -hmm. 205. Well, you know, Debbie had done the chart, and I, mm -hmm. I think that's just about when she was leaving, they're worth my numbers didn't agree with hers. Okay. So what I want to do is, besides trying to straighten out titles and also job grades, mm -hmm. is to go back and make sure we have what numbers they are and correspond to our listing. I mean, at one point we were getting a new one of those every meeting in Updating and yes, fixing and all they, that. They weren't all dated. We didn't know which one was coming. Right. And and remember I said I, I can't deal with this. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when, like, on the side over here where it's highlighted in yellow, that's where um, I, I could take a look. But it's when probably confidentiality was added to it and yeah. stuff like that. So, like I said, I'd like to review those job descriptions. But then we took it away. We took it away. But not from but the some of them I don't that were already done. Yeah, I think some. Like I said, you could because everybody was being confidential about everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you just don't want to, and they wanted to bump up in there, yeah. right? But if that was yeah. the number, the two hundred five versus, oh, was it two, two hundred five versus two twenty? Mm -hmm. The difference is fifteen. Wherever that came from, you know, it's like okay, is it legit? So I can add it here, or not? So yeah. I just want to make sure because a lot of these highlighted ones that basically they're frozen because it was like okay, is it going to be? I'd like to know from that what are they at? You know what I'm saying? Is it something that we're not doing here that is up or down that we need to fix? Mm -hmm. So. Wasn't Matt going to send us all a copy of my dreaming, the personnel um, handbook there? That the manual? That the one that they voted on, that they accepted as they accepted it? Because remember, Matt, it was accepted yeah. recently. Recently. Within the last year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The policies and procedures? Yeah. Or by yeah. No, policies, policies no, and No, which we have to, I want to straighten, policies straighten out the bylaw a bit, too. So I was going to bring that up at new business. So. Yeah, because I think the bylaw was updated within the last year or so. No, no that was that just for typos. Yeah. 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 It was. But the procedures manual mm -hmm. was accepted. I'm not sure if we know exactly how it was accepted. Right. We never saw the final. No, because we gave everything uh, to Mike. To Mike, and we never heard anything more. Right. Plus, we never we were, we were waiting. still waiting for information and in the forms and other things. Right. So, yeah. So. Yeah. So that's is that on here? The status. Um, did it? Yeah. PPM status. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, so the status besides what. what <laughs> 
where can we have a copy of what was approved mm -hmm. by yeah. the selectmen last is, year? Yeah, yeah, what is approved? Yeah. Not, and we don't want a hard copy. I certainly don't want a hard copy. Just I don't email address. Huh? Yes. Skip down to um. This is um. Oh, back. <laughs> I have to print them out. Okay. Go. Oh. <laughs> oh, I was okay. just going to start something else, but that's fine. We can continue with um. So I've already distributed this to the the select board and to the FinCom. And what it is is the personnel budget of the town broken out by position. Okay with grade and step and we show the progression so mm -hmm. what they were paid in fiscal 19 what we project they're going to be paid in fiscal 20 and how did that number come about in many cases that number came about as a result of change of hours because it's not a leap year it involved uh, any step change that that person was eligible for, mm -hmm. many of our people are not, is it the top step? And then the COLA. Mm -hmm. So if the person went from $10 to $12, you'll be able to see what contributed mm -hmm. to get you to 12. You can also see what positions are filled. So that's the actual payroll, that's the payroll we plan to run in fiscal 21. Because we're not aware of anybody looking to retire or leave us from that list. Now, we always have some change in public safety, the, the bigger departments, so amongst however many employees, so you have 25, an 30. Excuse me, you have an activity code right in here? So this is where you do the job? So the activity code is our, it goes back to the chart of accounts. Okay. So a 51 mm -hmm. is a management level employee earning a salary. A 51110 is an hourly employee who's being compensated from the, the, the charts that are in okay. the town meeting ward, the, the personnel charts. Mm -hmm. Or, alternatively, a, co a collective bargaining agreement where a similar chart is produced. So you can go to the, because we post all our contracts online, you can go to the contract and typically uh, three or four pages in there'll be a chart for all three years of the contract, but an individual at that rank and grade would be paid on an hourly basis. Okay. <coughs> when we do the budget, we don't show the hourly rate, we show the annualized salary. We actually project out the shifts that they will work. Okay, because mm -hmm. that's what they're going to be paid. We have to budget exactly. It's kind of a big deal with fire and ambulance because they work 24-hour shifts. And so if there's an extra day in the year, or two or three extra days in the year, so we're 52.4 weeks instead of 52, mm -hmm. that's two extra days, that's 48 hours. That's actually a fairly, that's a material amount of money. So you can scour that and mm -hmm. see if there's anything that jumps out at you. I, there shouldn't be, because employment here has been so stable. Um, for years, there were no steps. It's only been the past two years that steps have been paid out for the eligible employees. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> I always think it's an, an interesting to look at the, the bottom line, which is in the front, the first page. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. As I summarize there, Madam Chair, if I can just, we can share yeah. for one second. Uh, so I don't want to be inaccurate. Because it's not a leap year, we spend $6,000 less. It's actually <laughs> 5933 uh, the police contract has a bump in it for their accreditation. So accreditation 
we can go on and on and on about what it means, but it really means you have a top shelf police department. They have gone through a rigorous um, review process by a statewide committee. They look over all of their standard operating procedures, not only whether or not they've been written down, but whether or not they're actually being followed. <coughs> and when you reach that certain level of credibility and you're a highly professional police force, you can be accredited. Mm -hmm. We told them when we negotiated, if you can get to that, we'll give you a 1% bump to the base. Uh, which we are, we are budgeting for fiscal 21 because the committee has done its review and has preliminarily indicated that we're on track to, to reach that. So we're going to budget for it. Uh, the COLA itself is a 67000 if my eyesight's not failing me, $806. Mm -hmm. And the steps are only 27570 so the personnel budget this year is up just about 2.5 percent. That sounds like a lot. No, that's perfect. But it's just about right because yeah. in years past, it's actually been a lot more. Uh, so we've actually, that's the lowest it's been since 2016 as a rate of increase. I have a, um, talking about the accreditation, I know um, the teachers get, a, if you have a uh, college degree, you get this amount. If you have a um, master's degree, you get a, you. It, it is expressed in their um, contracts. You know how much more you get, and then if you have a PhD, you get that much more. Um, I, I'm assuming that the police also, gang, fire, or any union group has this. So do the non-union people? I know the library director doesn't get <laughs> any bonus for that, and probably mm. not the. Uh, senior center coordinator. So right now there's no provision in the personnel policies of the town to give anybody any extra money for their degrees earned um, as a non-union employee. Right. The teacher's contract, you're correct, uh, they have what are called lanes and it's not just the degree awarded, it's also progress towards the degree. So if you scour their contract I advise everyone t to do that. <laughs> it's the biggest contract with Donald Douglas signs. <coughs> um, if you have a bachelor's, bachelor plus 15, bachelor plus 36, those would be credits, and master's, and then master plus 15, master plus 30, master plus 45, master plus 60. They have seven lanes. And it's a, a little bit more than a 2% bump every time they move a lane. Mm -hmm. On top of the step and the pole. So we, to, to <laughs> I don't want to get off topic. No, but well, to I do. <laughs> okay, it's fair because it's personnel and because it, it does compare very differently. It's a very different system than we have in town. So the school department, an employee who is still growing in the profession, so they haven't reached the top step, um, they would get a step, they get the cola on top of the step, and if they're moving lanes, so they've uh, achieved, and, and they have to prove it. It has to be certified by the superintendent. But if they've achieved a certain academic level of achievement, then they would also get a lane. So if the step, and some of their steps are very large, so if you get a 5 or 6% step, and a 2% COLA, and a 2% lane, you get a 10% pay increase. Mm -hmm. And that's why the trajectory of that personnel budget is so sharp upwards. Mm -hmm. Because it's very aggressive as you progress through it. I, I'm on record, I'll say it to everyone who listens to me, it's unsustainable. Mm -hmm. Because even with half of the teachers in town at the top step, and only earning the COLA, so they're not getting a step, they're not getting a lane, they're just getting their COLA. Half the teachers meet that description, the others are progressing. Mm -hmm. Their payroll, which is 88% of their budget, goes up 3% a year. Yeah. The revenues of the town of Douglas only grow 1.7% a year. So 3%, 1.7, you do the math, over time, <coughs> that gap's going to get bigger and bigger, and that is what has happened. Mm -hmm. All right? <coughs> we, we're negotiating a contract soon. The talks technically have started, so lots of things will be on the table to be discussed. So to answer your question now directly, if this, that's how the schools work, we have only one employee group in town that does get an educational bump, and that's the police department. There was, and I'm not... I'm a Rhode Islander. <laughs> it got imported. But <coughs> I'll do the best I can. You, I, 
probably aware of it. The Quinville was in place. Yeah, was a yeah. statute was yeah. in place. And if you, if you accept, the towns would accept it. Now, I don't know if Douglas ever accepted it, <coughs> so but, but what they did what was I'm, they did the same thing yeah. as what the Quinville was providing. I think that's pretty much what you did. You yeah. mirrored the Quinville without accepting it. Right. And it became part of your contract anyway. So it's just as good as law. <coughs> and you've got bonuses built in for associate's degree, bachelor degree, and master's degree. Mm -hmm. I actually don't think there's a bump for anything beyond master's. But it's, it's actually a substantial bump. Mm -hmm. But then you also have the town clerk and the town treasurer who get a uh, 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 $1,000 prize for... Uh, I think it's the tax collector. Tax, okay, tax collector then. So those two ones um, as well. You know, so there's sort of a inequality here of who's getting uh, that. That was a state law that was mm. accepted by town meeting. Right. So, but why do they get rewarded and not everybody else in town? You know, it's you, you can't. I mean, yeah, it's, it's it was a, accepted because they have strong associations. Yeah. Yeah, right. Probably. Well, but that helps. <laughs> but just you know, when you're thinking of all of this, think think of also the non-union people that aren't, and and well, you know, the tax collector and the and the town clerk aren't union either. But uh, you know, for people getting these, yeah, these, I, I, I'm, these um, would agree with perks. some modifications. I mean, for some of us, the minimum price to pay is having a degree. Yeah. So when you advertise for a finance director, you gotta have a bachelor's degree or a really significant amount of accounting experience to offset mm -hmm. the lack of a degree. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, people in my profession have everything from a bachelor. I don't think there's too many of us without a bachelor's. Most have a bachelor. I think almost all have a bachelor's. Many have masters. Quite a few mm -hmm. have advanced degrees beyond that. I do. Um, it's the price to the price to even be considered for the jobs. Um, I, I like to s tie educational incentives to the extent that they exist at all to the really specific requirements of the job. Like, I, I don't want to bump, uh, just to make it personal because it's easier to talk about, I don't want to bump because I have a law degree. I'm saving you money because I make much more efficient use of your attorneys mm -hmm. than of somebody who doesn't. I know when I need help and when I don't. Mm -hmm. um, but. In reality, it was going out and getting the MCPPO that matters more. That's the yeah, Massachusetts that? Certified Public Purchasing Officer. I sat through three trainings, three days each. So nine days of training, took three tests, and then did a background check. Why does it matter? Well, because now I can sign things, I can do things on behalf of the town that somebody who's not an MCPPO cannot do. So that made me a more desirable employee. So you're going to give me a bump, give me a bump for that, which I, I think the selectman did mm -hmm. with my last review. So I'm not saying I need one. But uh, that to me is more, so uh, in the police context, degrees on in criminal justice, there are various pr professional certifications, you know, firearm certification, accident reconstruction. The, I think those things are more valuable than what they did when they were 20 years old, like that, a two-year degree. How much has that impacted their ability to be a really great police officer versus the training they're doing now, the certifications they're getting now on the really specific aspects of their job. That's a huge thing. Um, <coughs> so, I mean, there's, there's food for conversation about that, uh, fuel for conversation about that. But right now we're just trying to make the system that we have work. <laughs> um, I, I, I don't see things that jump out at me as being overly glaring. I think, um, when I would try to emphasize to people when they look at positions on the municipal side is recognizing the, um, the assistant treasurer's enormous responsibility. So that person processes payroll, which has to be perfect to the penny, and administers benefits. Mm -hmm. If we make mistakes with wages or we fail to enroll somebody properly in their benefits or we're not, you know, paying those bills on time, that's a pretty significant impact to the town. So that, when I think of positions that some people think are clerical, I kind of, that's not a purely data entry responsibility. There's, there's a lot of reconciliation and other things that go into that. 
and we, we were fortunate to have such a great hire. Um, and this, I feel the same way about the building officials clerk because that position holds together zoning and yeah. building permits. Mm -hmm. You have to know a lot just to answer the phone because you can't escape. People ask you questions. Um, you can't opine on the code. Mm -hmm. That's the code official's job. But you still can give people pretty significant guidance. It will save them a lot of grief mm -hmm. if they say, well, what's the process for this, that, or the other? And you're able to answer that question. But there's an uh, archiving organization direction of what, you know, being cost effective, cost efficient, making sure the code official's got a full schedule of inspections and not running from one end of town to the other, then back to the other, you know, making sure it makes sense. So I, I have an appreciation for that position. I want to call people out. I, I'm calling out the positions. Mm -hmm. Um, more than right, anything. exactly, and that's what you should be doing. It's yeah. not the person, it's the position. Uh, well, we have exactly. strong people in those positions, that helps. But those positions themselves, no matter who we have there, they're very responsible. Yeah. For instance, the uh, other day I got a, uh, an email from the Southern um, Worcester Conservation Commission about an opening they had for a planner, which was full-time, and it paid 38 to 43 or $45,000. And you look community development here, and we have a part-time person in a position that's being paid more than the minimum that they are. You know. Some so of that's an artifact of the town of Douglas's arrangement with the, with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some of that is Southern Worcester County having to be really. Uh, that's low for a planner, so they're low and we're high. So that's that's the, the point of comparison there. I mean, the legacy here was that the conservation agent was was really was pretty much a department head. Maybe not technically, but very close. It was compensated but like one. And, um, and when the position was reduced as part of a budget reduction process to a part time job, um, this isn't my it wasn't my responsibility. I wasn't here. The decision was made to just take the salary and cut it in half not tie it back to, it's a management salary, it's not tied back to an hourly. Mm -hmm. In order to keep the skilled, the skills that that person had. And so that's, that's your history. I don't know if we went out for that position now, we would go out at that salary. But. Excuse me, we change the subject. I did have a question on the facility manager that's now hourly. Year five, we were going to get a job description or something on that. Did I should have gotten that to you. Did I promise that last time and not give it to you yet? Yes. yes. Or, <laughs> shame on me. Because okay. I have that. That's done. Okay. So let me just make another note. There's no board. And that's Adam's job description. So that's really the working foreman's job description at highway. Mm -hmm. And the facilities management responsibilities are now subsumed within that. Okay. And it is one position, one person um, <coughs> being paid the PM5 as a PM2 or whatever he was before. So that's that's where we ended up with that. But um, we can get that to you. It's it's done. Um, the board approved it for what selection. Which, by the way, I bring job descriptions to the Board of Selectmen for, I call it ratification or what have you. Even though I don't really have to, I do it because, first of all, I want, they're the executive ultimately in the end. Mm -hmm. And to me, those assignments really are on the edge of being policy decisions. And that is the purview of the policy decisions are the purview of the Board of Selectmen, not me. So. Mm -hmm how a position is configured because of its budget ramifications, because of issues of is the job getting done or not getting done, mm -hmm. those ultimately fall to the board. So I do it, I do all the work, but I do ask them to read it, pass it on it, because I, I just think it's important mm -hmm. to clearly, and God forbid we ever end up in a dispute with an employee, but I have, not here, but in prior jobs, been in disputes with employees where the job description was the most important document discussed in the entire arbitration, was what exactly was that person's job. 
And if it's not well crafted and it's not done with the with legal advice, I, I also run job descriptions by mm -hmm. labor council. Because you've got to have that nailed down. And with today's environment around the Americans with Disabilities Act and everything else, you have to be very precise about what the essential duties of the job are and what the physical requirements are. Mm -hmm. um, because we, we absolutely don't ever want to discriminate against anybody, but we also have to be realistic. You know, a person who is really severely vision impaired probably can't be a wastewater operator. If you can't see the dials mm, yeah. and the signals coming back from the equipment and there's no way to accommodate your, your inability to see that, then you really shouldn't be doing it. It's dangerous. Right. So and it's the same. And I use, use an example because I actually had to do this in real life. I had to have this conversation with somebody. It was shocking that I had to, but I had to tell someone, you know, a police officer who can't run isn't doing as much. Mm -hmm. Stop! <laughs> you, know, you, can, you can do all the, all of the things you're trained to do. You know, raise your voice, be authoritative, stop! But if you can't chase the guy, you're not, you're not a police officer. So that's it. it but uh, So for example, we will have this conversation soon with the water commissioners, because they're looking to advertise, and looking to fill some positions. We've gone back and forth with them. You've probably seen some of the traffic mm -hmm. with, um, with the chairman. Mm -hmm. They don't really have the most recent versions. You don't have the most right. recent versions. I read them and I said, I, we can't do this. Mm -hmm. Because for instance, and it's all, it's honest, simple mistakes, but they're important. Physical abilities required. The ability to read and analyze documents. <laughs> well, that's a cognitive requirement. Yeah, yeah. I can see the letters. That's yeah. the only physical aspect of it. Can I see the letters? I can see the letters. Well, if I understand a gosh darn thing. I mean, mm. my son has a T-shirt. I can, <laughs> I can explain it for you, but I can't understand it for you. <laughs> yeah. So that yeah. we just got to be really precise about that stuff because God forbid you ever find yourself in that situation where you've terminated somebody or you're looking to and you can't because your job description, they can make the argument that they're fitting, that they're, they're not right. missing anything, right. and they are. <coughs> so we'll, we'll take, be taking a bite of the apple with all six of those, I think. Okay, because I know when we did a self-evaluation, which I spoke before about that, we noticed that there were some areas that the person felt that they were entitled to more numbers. And we're going to review that to see, okay, what does the job description really say versus what do we evaluate from mm. that? You know? If I remember so. correctly, some of those it was like pulling teeth to get the, to get the job information description stuff, yeah. to begin with. Yeah, it was, yeah, still just. <laughs> well, it should be. I, I, to the best of my knowledge, on in our purview, our being all the department heads, I think we have a presentable job description at this point for everybody. Good. Okay. So I know we'll, we we'll, at some point we'll have to update your archive. Make sure you have the same yeah, ones that right, we have. Right. Exactly. Right. But that becomes that's the driving force behind the advertisement and evaluation documents. I mean, it flows from the job description. Yeah, and this one, it gets it's a goof there. It should be the same as this yeah. here. Yeah, it and, should be. And so oh no, it's not. And I'll tell you why. Um, but she's still he so he was already at that that grading step. Mm -hmm. So he's progressing normally without any adjustments. Like he's on the path. Mm -hmm. She was increased substantially. Mm -hmm. So the step should be this. It is the same. Everything's the same. The salary from last year. So it should be the next step up would be the same. Yeah. But if you add those two together, it comes to well, this total I did total this amount. math. I, I ended up convincing myself that this was right. No, oh. it's not. <laughs> because it's going to be more, more uh, higher than your COLA, higher than 1.75%. Yeah. It may have been because I couldn't have formula didn't come. You're, I mean, yes, you're right. That is what it is, because they're the same. Yeah. They're virtually identical. Mm -hmm. It's good that the number works out to be the same. Yeah. Um, <coughs> but it's going to mess up your whole COLA figuring. A little bit. That's the new base no matter what. Yeah. 
So the step and core will be figured from that new base. Yeah. So. Um, but it's better to have it correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so there's a little bit of adjustment there, but mm. I'm trying to remember. I know I had a nifty explanation for why that math worked out, but <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Um, this, that's the actual, that's what's happening. Okay. They're, they are in a slightly, just in terms of the way the formulas work in the spreadsheet. He's starting in one place, she's starting in, in another. So the way the numbers, anyway. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a distinction without a difference because that's the real, that's what's really going on. Okay. They're the same grade and step, another year has passed, they will get the same step and the same grade. Mm -hmm. Okay, do we move on? I'd like to talk about the annual employee review status. They're all done or? No. <laughs> Aren't you ambitious? Well, I think um, we had talked in the manual about having a November date. To, November know. date. I would like to at least get them done before a final budget is submitted in March. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, and, and my real goal is to get it done before January. Mm -hmm. so, be, so before the supplement is published, mm -hmm. that should be done. A couple of departments have been doing them. I'm holding back because I have asked the board to do mine. I think mine should be first. Mm -hmm. And then I, you know, we, then we go to the department heads. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we did. We have our library meeting tonight because mm -hmm. of um, not uh, no quorum in December, but um, we did follow. Um, we switched everything around, so we did follow your your lead of the way your job description or your your review is 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 set up and. Mm -hmm. So that was nice to be on the same page as <laughs> the rest of the town. Well, well yeah. Well, what I'm trying to do here is, so I've got this is a pet peeve of mine, so I don't want to take everybody's time, but <clears throat> in the past, when I worked in other places, I felt the reviews, not only of my performance, but department head performance were totally ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. They well, had, we had abso yeah. absolutely nothing to do with what we do mm -hmm. as our job. And I had one person who I really deeply resent, I can't stand her. Oh. She was on the town council in the town of Rhode Island, and she thought that if she went through the town charter and found everything that I had the authority to do, mm -hmm. and she made that into an evaluation instrument. Well, half the time I didn't need to do half that stuff because it wasn't presented to me. It wasn't an issue I had to cope with. So she was giving, she was trying to find an excuse to give me bad grades because she didn't like me, but she did that, and I would go to my review, and I'd say, this has nothing to do with what I do. Mm -hmm. the, the frontline responsibility for the safety and health of the public, that was one of the things, is with the department heads for public safety departments. Mm -hmm. So if you went along with my recommendation that they get raises because they've done a good job, don't give me a bad grade on it mm -hmm. because you, well, I don't know what he's done. Yeah. Yes, you do. <laughs> you gave the police chief and fire chief a raise based on my recommendation and I'm the one who renewed their contracts and evaluated their performance and supported their performance through discipline, through budgets, and everything else. So I did what was required. Mm -hmm. So I, I had a lot of bitterness about that. When I came here and I saw that Mike's was really vague, it's just you couldn't tell, you couldn't tell what he was doing from, it was just, it almost kind of came out to, do we still like you? <laughs> and that's fair. And that, that, a lot of administrators like to work with that. I don't. I think we have those really specific requirements. Fiscal management, personnel management, risk management. That's what we're hired to do. It goes above and beyond any contractual language or statutory language mm -hmm. dealing with our jobs. That's what we're supposed to be here for. And with me, it works out neat because it's 10 categories. If you score it on a 10-point must system, then you can get to 100, and that's mm -hmm. cool because that's the way we're graded in spelling tests when yeah. we were kids. <laughs> so did I spell it right? Okay. If we use those same categories for all our department heads, their scores should reflect mine. Mm -hmm. we, we are a team and we should all be. So if you can't give me a good grade if we don't think one of the public safety chiefs is slipping up on something mm -hmm. and it's falling through the cracks, mm -hmm. well, you can't give me a good grade for the same thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because it was my responsibility to manage that department head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we use the same criteria, for all of the management employees and roll it up to the town administrators, then there should be some communication, some fairness back and forth about, well, what exactly are we doing here? Who's managing who? And is the, 
the proper example being set and the proper milestones being established for the people being managed. Mm -hmm. So that's how we came up with, with that. The only difference is obviously some of the personnel management issues for me would include work, worker safety. Mm -hmm. That might only be 10 points out of my 100. But for John Furno, that's probably going to be 20. Right. Mm -hmm. Because these guys are outside, digging holes in the dirt, complying with OSHA regulations, operating heavy equipment. So a really big part of his evaluation has to be, are the people doing the work being right. kept safe? Mm -hmm. That's, so that it should be a little bit different that way, but it should still sum up to scores that we can reconcile yeah. at the end. Um, I think I made it better. <laughs> no, it, it, was, it, was, it was a pleasure to do, and, um, and then uh, Justin came up with some sort of, it wasn't Survey Monkey, but something like that, that um, allowed us all to, which made, because I used to try to figure all this out, and I'm not techie anymore, but um, he, he had some sort of survey so that he received all of the um, eight trustees' responses and was able to include them all, and, 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 and we remained anonymous, which mm -hmm. is what we wanted to do. And, um, and so then he had to, you know, compile it all. And mm -hmm. I didn't have to do that anymore. <laughs> so I, it made me very happy. And, and it came out um, very, very fair, I thought. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's good, good um, Now, within our departments, to get back to your agenda item mm -hmm. evaluations, they are proceeding. I don't micromanage the evaluation instrument. I like to see it. I like to read the evaluations when they're done. Mm -hmm. Um, there are some things that should be universal, uh, all the, the usual skills, uh, proper attendance, uh, arrives on time, and prepared for work, all those things. But an equipment operator at the highway department's working in a different universe than a police officer, so I don't want them to be the same. I want right. them to be driven by the, the realities of their job. And uh, police is you know, because they're in the accreditation process, they're right on top of these evaluations. Uh, fire, we've been doing very well with an annual. A lot of theirs will be done in May. So, so is this form universal now as far as all the people using your new form? No, the, the, the form is for management. Management only? Okay. Yeah, so within the departments, this, this is what I'm, I'm saying, is that within the departments, the supervisor has an instrument they're using for their employees. It's okay. not universal. All right, because I know we had one sort of evaluation. Yeah, no, and that, that, um, uh, Bill Cundiff and uh, other, uh, Marlene, Marlene Wing was on it. There's yeah. a couple of others. It was the staff one, which was um, much better than the previous one was. Yeah, right. I mean, the other have one. Have they, yeah, you know, they show up clear. and you, yeah. you know, you, yeah, you show, show up. Yeah, show up smile, it's not Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for a raise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, we don't want it to be like that, but we do want, um, we do want it to be specific to what people do. Right. To use the position that I was talking about before, mm -hmm. it makes a world of difference performance-wise if the assistant treasurer is successfully reconciling and closing right. and yeah, posting yeah, yeah, payroll exactly. on time yeah. versus not. Exactly. Uh, I wish we had this in my hometown, in Westport. Can the treasurer add and subtract? Because <laughs> we had an elected treasurer who didn't certify free cash. Oh, for we years. had we we had those at one point. <laughs> we had, remember um, we the one that we had to? I, I think I I got the um, town accountant for uh, Sturbridge to it, who lived lives in Douglas. Yeah. I said, can you just sort of step in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she, she did. did. She, she did, did for yeah. like six months, and uh, until a new one was found or yeah. something. Yeah. Staff inside town hall, it's pretty uniform. Mm -hmm. A lot of the tasks are similar, you know, proper management of paperwork, response time to constituent require, uh, requests. Uh, but police and fire are quite different. Like uh, getting back to fire, if you look through the fire contract, there are roles that are appointed by the chief on an annual basis. Uh, and they run pretty much from May to May. So uh, safety coordinator, but that's all union EMS people, probably. so it yeah. But there are still evaluations, there's, and there's yeah, money yeah, yeah. tied to it, so he mm -hmm. makes those, he does the evaluation, then he does his, his appointment. So who's coordinating all these different evaluation forms so that they're using them? The, the department heads are, okay. and then I make sure the department heads Because we had a situation where it was, I remember when everyone was using some form, and they came up with that. 
climate. Yeah, well, that was the, the one we had been using, and then Matt sent another one. Yeah, what he he developed, but I'm not sure that the library for the rest of the staff. We we used yours for Justin, but uh, you know I don't know how. No, the rest probably of not. No, you, so in your example there, I mean there are some very specific requirements um, around customer satisfaction as well as internal communication and competence yeah, yeah. that are unique to the library. And mm -hmm. so you should be evaluating them on their th on that basis. Well, not I us. Used I mean, to. Justin does Justin it. Does. But mm -hmm. I, you know, and I'm not sure if the tool, I can ask him tonight, you know, um, what tool he uses or yeah. what his stuff is. And as long as, I mean, if the only thing that we really have to be careful of is that every employee with a similar job description should be evaluated with the same fundamental criteria, criteria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and we're not uh, s creating criteria for one specific person for one specific reason. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, it's the position of the person. Yes. Yeah. That's not a winner. Yeah, but so I don't know if, if <laughs> it's that consistent. That happens with titles, too. Yeah. You know, she and I may be doing the exact same job, but she's a s a, a supervisor or yeah, something, an and, and she's just a manager a or something. Or, you know, and that's been done. Yeah, quite a few yeah. departments. So, just wondering how the control of all these different evaluation forms that you know you're controlling them now, so that you know what formats they're using. I'm just trying to get so. Yeah, so I review them all. If I have comments to make on either the substance or the format, mm -hmm. and make them. Right now, okay. I haven't had a lot of okay. feedback to the departments. Um, I read, you know, Highway did theirs in the fall. It's probably the last batch I read as a batch. Mm -hmm. uh, then in preparation for fall town meeting, we did evaluations in the building inspection department mm -hmm. to justify a grade change. Okay. Um, Thank you. That was warranted. So, Matt, can you send us each um, a copy of the personnel procedure manual? Manuals. The one that's looking. being, that the last one that was approved by the selectmen? The policies and yeah, procedures. Yeah, just, just, just email it to us. We don't that. want a paper copy. Okay. Just email it. <laughs> It'll be a clean copy too, no red lines. Okay. Because <laughs> it's been approved. Yeah. That's what we have. Okay. And what else I have? We're going to be working on, uh, which we talked about before, our... Um, it's like five areas where the titles are different and stuff like that. So I'll email you this. I've been starting to compare it where so this is our position evaluation worksheet, and this is from the compensation plan from the book report. Hey, you were right there on your, under your hand, yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Town meeting. So um, this is ours, like I said, and what I did is I put the notes here, and these are the grades. And if the grade was different, I put a grade over here of what this one was. So this is our grades from our evaluation sheet. Now, I don't want you to go and jump and say, oh, it's a six here and we only do five here, because there was issues <laughs> mm -hmm. in the last year or so. And I've had to put on our sheet notes of what was going on. So we wanted to go back through the job descriptions and make sure that that definitely is that versus what it says here. Okay. So I'll email you this, but like I said, the tab titles are different, and there's like four or five more sections where the titles are different. So to work on the consistency of the titles. So send me that. I can't keep this. You can keep it. Okay. Right? Yeah. But I'll email it to you so you can. Okay. So the, these, so when it says not listed, it means there is no entry in the chart approved by town meeting for that, that position. position, correct. Okay. And some of these we talked about today that correct. don't exist anymore. So right. the, that clears so I up two of them. Those, yeah. The one that I can kind of get to quickly is the per diem clerk at the adult social center. 
which we also questioned. Yeah, um, that summit. was officially voted at, at one of it's, their meetings. Right. So mm -hmm. is it now officially the uh, adult yeah, adult social, social service. service. So the person that works for them is going to be called adult social coordinator. Is it? No, director. Director. Okay. Director. Adult social service. So the difference between the clerk and the per diem clerk is really doesn't need to be a difference. <coughs> it's both an OA one clerk right. compensated as an MS one. Mm -hmm. We distinguish. We're using a little bit of different language for the two positions because we're funding one. Mm -hmm. with a state grant. The grant goes away, the position goes away. Okay. But because they're on the payroll and they're an employee of the town, we mm -hmm. put them in the budget right. because the grant is, is grossed as a revenue source. Um, but really, we don't need to make that difference. Again, it's, it's to flag something that's not relevant to the, their classification as an employee. Their funding source doesn't affect their job description, what they're required to do. So these people are doing a lot of the same, almost all the same things day to day. Mm -hmm. They might have some special assignments because of the hours. You can't yeah. give somebody a daily job if they, should, if they work two days a week. Right. <coughs> but it all all fall, falls within this rubric of OA1 and MS1. That, that explains that. I don't know why there's... Well, when it comes to water sewer, that's got more to do with the getting job descriptions in so we can reconcile all this. Because the chief operator position is vacant. I, I, I think, if I'm right, we have systems manager right now and two assistant operators. Do they call it just assistant operators? No, no, assistant, assistant water, water and sewer. Sewer operator, okay. I think one is water and one is sewer. Okay. But I think they're paying them the same. Okay, so I'll email you that if you'd like. We can have that happen. Okay. All right, well, I'll try to drive down on it. <laughs> I was laughing about the minute taker, because the minute taker really is a meeting minute recorder. Right. <laughs> That's what I say. Let me know what same. it is. <laughs> and we're not costing you anything because we have a marvelous minute taker. <laughs> and neither are the library uh, trustees because I'm the minute taker there. So it used to be that that's the way it was. That we had a secretary for every committee. We didn't have to do this. So. Um, Okay, I, I have a check here where the Massachusetts Municipal Association. The manuals you said you could possibly get for us? Yes, I'm not clear. I'm, I thought I was getting you the benchmark survey. Yeah. You were talking about salaries and stuff yes. from other towns. So that's what I'm trying to get you. That's what okay. I've locked out. Well, we were looking at. I did pay my dues, too. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> we were looking at where policies and procedures where... Oh, whether they have a template? Good, yeah, a good format for what we could do because when we were doing it and trying to fix it, it was like all over the place, not organized well, mm. you know? And uh, Yeah, and there's some things missing, mm, frankly. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, I haven't gotten there yet. So I, I just is that something that they would have? Because like I said, I went online and I saw job descriptions. They would, but I, so you learn things as you go along. Mm -hmm. In my, in an earlier assignment in the town, I grabbed one of those manuals and hired a consultant and mm -hmm. went through the whole thing. <coughs> and uh, it was costly because it was a, a well-known payroll consulting firm, paychecks. And it was expensive and I, I found out after the fact that Labor Council usually does that for 300 400 bucks. <laughs> I felt about this tall. Oh, um, 
Now, to be honest, that community had not done any work on any of their personnel issues for many, many years. It was completely, they didn't have a manual. So we were writing it from scratch. So it wasn't going to be 300 or 400. It was maybe like 3,000 or 4,000. I still spent more than that. So, but I did get um, something that was really solid. So <coughs> it's six and one half dozen the other. Here you have something. Mm. So I, I'm more inclined to reach out to Labor Council, not the MMA, and say, mm -hmm. what, what's the most current um, manual template you have? Mm. And uh, can I review it? To tailor it to Douglas's needs, and that, right? To make it more, you know, to me efficient as far as like even going through it. Well, yeah, and it's there are some there are still going to be things we need to work on. We have more than one version of a sexual harassment policy, for mm -hmm. instance. Depending where you look, look you would get yeah. a different version. Right. Internally, we, we've instructed everyone that because the most recent policy review was at the police department. Mm -hmm by the Towns Labor Council in connection with, a, with an active case, that's the most recent version. It was updated in their standard operating procedures to be the most current version of, of a sexual harassment policy. So all the department heads have been instructed to use that one and go over it with your employees and have them sign. We really technically need to amend the personnel policies and procedures of the town with that policy to replace the one that's there that's yeah. no longer current. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're, we're still trying to catch up with some of that. Budget season's a tough time to do this stuff. But spring won't be too bad. Once we get past the next six weeks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all set. I'm not, though. Yeah, yeah, under new business, um, I'm, I'm still concerned that the personnel bylaw isn't um, in line with the way things are done right now with your authority and stuff like that. And I think it should be updated. And, and so do you have the most recent version that was approved by town meeting? Yeah, it's um, the town clerk has it. And all we did the last time was do typos fixed typos okay it, it's not it doesn't um, it gives us much more authority than we actually have with your with the administrative act yeah I thought that well I'll check it I'll make sure she got the right version because it well it has to pass this town meeting so we did that did we do this that last time I hope not no it was just as she said, just spelling errors, typos, things like that. No, that's inaccurate. Article 12 of the warrant for this annual town meeting to see if the town will vote to approve a proposed personnel bylaw to replace the existing version. The proposed text is on file in the office of the clerk. The changes recommended by Town Labor Council to update the bylaw to be more consistent with the special act establishing mm -hmm. town administrator and with current practice. And so we voted on it? If, yeah. We voted. Last year's town meeting? Last May, yeah. Last May? Okay, so, so no, we don't have it. Oh. No, no. Nice. Excuse me. I will get you that. Yes. And they should have it over at the clerk's office. They should know that. It should be online, should it? No, it's, it should be. Yeah. Because we always try to get them online. Probably. The new website's pretty good, right? but sometimes you have to go through a bunch of clicks to get mm -hmm. to where you want to be. So let me make sure Suzanne's put it in a place where we can find it. Okay, so I'm going to send it. Because that was a pretty comprehensive rewrite. That was... Okay. Yeah. 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 Why weren't we included in the conversation? <laughs> Can't imagine. <laughs> well, I mean, it was... Well, it must me, it was old business. It was 2012. And printed in what went home, me, though. You know, it wasn't, yeah, know, right, exactly. Yeah. Are we done? Well, I just had this self evaluation. So we talked to the girls a little bit. This is self evaluations we had everyone sent out with. Oh, yeah, to review what they did. Yeah. yeah, so I'm just going to get with the girls on that. And 
I'm pretty much all set. All right. I see okay. I'm being excluded on the basis of my gender, so I will leave. <laughs> well, <laughs> <it's dead. laughs> so that's all right. Yeah. I'll be home. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, this still don't include some of the departments, but what I figured to do is to take a look at it and then look at areas so that we might improve our um, rating system with, you know. And uh, I circled a couple of things here. It looked at um, job number DO2, the second one down. It's under judgment and initiative, where in white, that's where we rated them, and in green, that is uh, what they rate themselves. So you can see there's a big Yes. You know, disparity there, yes. and same with uh, supervision required, and also interpersonal relations. But then everything else pretty much comes in line with that. And uh, so everyone that you have an asterisk there, there was a little a question. No, what oh. it is is the ones in green, of the self evaluation from the people. The right. ones in white, are what we rated. Right, them. but I asterisk is over here where. The number came oh, in different. Okay. okay, the rating, mm -hmm. and then I put what the rating would be, mm -hmm. and that's why it was like, okay, it needs to be looked at because mm -hmm. it's probably okay, I have it dated. Some of what I did is I started dating them, saying, okay, this is when we reviewed it, and this is what the numbers were. Okay, so okay. if you want to just take a look at that, and uh, we can discuss that at our next meeting. Sure. Okay, and. If I could get um, maybe, uh, let's see. Also, um, the job descriptions. If we could start working on those to get the rating and, and what it says here so we can start comparing. You want me to those. bring in all the originals? or If you want to, and we can work on them all together. Okay. Like we say, sure. if we do 10, yeah. at 10 a time, I mean, that's not too bad. <laughs> and besides, he's going to be working on giving us new ones, so it'll be, right. if he gives us the same ones we're working on, we'll be able to take a look and right. see what they are. Okay. With the ratings. So the, yeah, the With the sheet. The, the sheet, sheet with the numbers yeah. and all okay. that. Yeah. Okay, I'll put Business or when do you want to meet again? Uh, first week in February. I get a, that's not the calendar. I didn't follow the calendar. How's the six sound for you? Uh, I think it's fine. 3 p.m.? Yeah. Okay, 3 p.m. February 6th. Okay, can I have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. <laughs> okay. Aye. Aye. Aye.